this week on The Bachelor. So why should she choose you? Ooh, great question. Why Ariel should pick me? Um, hmm. Great answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great story, huh? No. Um. um. Um is the sound in dumb. And now you've crossed your legs like a woman. God, okay, should we just start over? No, no, we need to put a pin in this. Welcome to Bachelor Hometowns Week, the week where everyone's parents ask, are you really into this guy? How did you get this far? And all the women respond with, Mom! <laughs> I just want an Oscar! So let's take a look at our selection of daddies for the week, starting with... Zack in the shower again? Uh, that's not what I meant. No, first off for the week, we're in Pittsford, Vermont for a hometown with Gabby, who, after seeing Zack's distaste for maple syrup week one, thought it'd be a great idea for this time to go... We are gonna have a full maple experience. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. So these two torture a tree until it cries sweet, sweet tears for my pancakes. Is it sticky in there? It's kind of warm. Oh, it is wet in there. Yeah, well, she's not deep enough. That's what she said! <laughs> <laughs> and, well, eventually, Gabby has a test for Zack. He's gotta pick out which of these bottles contains legit maple syrup, and which contains a fake batch. That one's not as good as this one, I don't think. It's good, it's, but not as good. I think that might be the best. Oh or... my god, you just shot me. All right, if this were the Canadian version of the show, I'm pretty sure he'd be in jail right now. Do you know what I, I put on pancakes? Powdered sugar. No. Mayonnaise? Mustard. What? Go to jail. 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 But enough of all this, it's now time to meet Vermont Daddy as Zack is introduced to Gabby's mom, dad, sister, and two brothers. And to Zack's delight, the theme of this hometown is easy breezy, as pretty much everyone welcomes Zack in with no problem, especially Gabby's dad Kevin, who apparently is a hopeless romantic. You're saying you can meet someone and get engaged and fall in love in one to two months. I think you can fall in love in a day. Finally, production has found a dad perfect for this show. I mean, they're out here asking Kevin stuff like, you really think your daughter could fall in love with Zach in like a month? And he's just like, oh hell yeah. But also like, look at him, he's tearing up seeing his girl. We always stand an emotionally available and supportive girl dad. But the one little bump in this date is that Gabby is simply afraid of being the first hometown of the week. Cause Zach's got three more ahead of him and Gabby doesn't want to be forgotten. It's hard to like feel like really happy right now because I'm really sad. Profound words. I can't be happy because I'm sad. I can't be full because I'm hungry. So Zach departs telling Gabby to trust in what they've got and it's now time to move on to Ariel's hometown in the Big Apple. On our way to New York. New York, New York. The city's so nice they named it twice. Manhattan is the other name. Here, Ariel will be taking Zach around Washington Square Park before grabbing a slice from Zach's favorite pizza joint. Right here is my favorite New York pizza joint. And I'm gonna go get me a New York slice. Then, after some za, Ariel takes Zach to a Jewish deli to enjoy some tongue on tongue action. Tongue sandwich. Tongue sandwich. Mm -hmm. Cow tongue, yeah. Whoa. It's good, no? It's really good. Yeah. I'm a fan of the tongue. Eventually, they end up in a speakeasy where Ariel tells Zack that her mom and dad fled the Soviet Union where they were persecuted for being Jewish. So she's very proud to show Zack some of her culture and to have him meet her family. But it's not her parents Zack should be nervous about meeting, it's her protective brother, Bobby. I'm sure you're a respectable guy, I'm sure you're a nice guy, whatever. When's my sister's birthday? How do you really know a person? Like, do, do you know my sister's middle name? If you love someone and, and you have that feeling, like, why, why don't you have the rest of your relationship or the rest of the, your life together to get to know the smaller details? Yeah, Bobby. If you marry someone, you have the rest of your life to find out when their birthday is. So Bobby puts Zach through the George Foreman special with this grilling, and Zach starts making his drama face so, you know, Bobby won't be getting a rose at the end of the night. Then we move on to Ariel's dad, Felix, who is also a skeptic. As Zach tells him that every week, it's a hard decision on who to send home, and he's like, well, how can I trust you when every week you're mine? is changing and, oh, looks like Felix won't be getting a rose either. But like a good bachelor dad, Felix tells Ariel that, at the end of the day, he loves her and trusts her decision to do what will make her the happiest. I'm happy that you're happy and I trust your judgment so much. If you make your choice, we're ready to support you. 
for your happiness and to support you. So hometown number two is complete, and we're now headed from New York to Columbus, Georgia to meet Charity's family. And this time, instead of heading right out into a date, Zach will be meeting the family first. Where, after a quick hello, everyone splits off into private chats to ask the question... Are you in love with him? Are you falling in love with I him? I was am falling. Um, I have not... We have not said that L word to each other yet. Yeah, that really seems to be the theme of hometowns this season. Instead of the classic, yup, we're in love like after a month, this season we're hearing... I'm could be falling in love soon. I am definitely falling for you. We've acknowledged, obviously, like, the connection we have, but we have not said, like, I am in love. So, after a ton of extra charity screen time alone with her dad and friends, for a reason that, well, we'll talk about in a sec... Are you prepared for the outcome that you don't want? If I'm not the person that he chooses at the end, like, will it be easy? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Probably, wink. Well, we finally get to see Zach as he sits down with Charity's brother, Nehemiah. Another protective brother because, as we learned on Charity's one-on-one, -on -one, she dealt with infidelity in her last relationship, and now she's with a man dating three other women. Because when it happened before, I didn't know if you were going to be okay. And um, I did not like seeing you like that. I know because you deserve the world. Oh, sorry, did we cut away from Zach again to focus on Charity's story? Whoops. We really just want to highlight Charity's love journey for no reason at all and include these very touching shots of Charity and her brother crying over how much she deserves love. Then follow it up with another section with Charity and her mom Vicky crying over the opportunity for someone to see her and love her for who she is, until eventually it's time for Zach to show up and for them to go square dancing for the night portion of their date, where at the end, Charity says this. I think it's even safe to say that I'm honestly falling in love. On to the final hometown for the week, which is like a double hometown as both Zach and Katie live in Austin, Texas. So instead of coming up with touristy things to do, Katie's like, Hey, do you want to run some errands together? So these two go grocery shopping, hit up Katie's home, have Zach assemble her furniture, and wait a minute, has this all been a long con to get someone to help her move into her new place? Zach thought she was here for love, but I actually really need to move in. Did you just bring me to like fix things in your house? Oh, maybe. Pivot! 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 Okay, this is actually a big brain move. Get into hometowns and do some actual real life stuff together. Everyone's out here playing checkers while Katie's playing 4D chess. Which is totally working. I mean, after a series of this face or this face from Zach, with Katie, Zach is making this face. So yeah, I think it's gonna be smooth sailing for her. But now that Katie's finished moving in, it's time to meet Katie's mom, Anne, and her aunt, grandma, and brother. A tight-knit family that's seen two father figures walk out of Katie's life, which is a big point of focus for Katie's mom as she wants to ensure the same thing doesn't happen to her daughter. She wants assurances from Zach. But you know the theme of the episode. Like saying I love that you to word. someone. Yeah. And like it's not a word that can just be tossed around in, in my book. And I can tell you this, I can absolutely see myself falling in love with her. But also, same goes for Katie. She too is hesitant to drop the L word as she doesn't want to use it lightly. Her last relationship was seven years on and off of pure toxicity. I definitely think I stayed in that relationship a lot longer than I should have because of the fact that my fathers did leave and I just didn't want another man to leave my life. With the exception of my brother, Every man in my life has failed me. But with mom's stamp of approval, Katie can end the night feeling like things can confidently progress with Zach, and she can comfortably say, I think it just makes it very easy to say that, you know, I'm falling in love with you, and it feels so good, it's scary. Well, at this point, Zach has a sit down with his bro FF, Sean Lowe, and they recap the episode we just watched for like 20 minutes, so I'm not gonna recap the recap because this isn't recapception. So let's just jump ahead to the rose ceremony where Ariel gets the first rose, Katie the second, and this one comes down to either Charity or Gabby. Gabby. 
And so, Zack sends Charity home, but don't feel so bad for her yet. She'll get her time to shine as we now turn to the second episode for the week, The Women Tell All, where all your favorite contestants like who and... Huh? Are here to talk about the big dramatic moments of the season, like when Zack kissed Kat that one time. So to up the drama, Jesse and production are hyping up fantasy suites, or as they're referring to it this time... Or as Zack likes to call it, Sex Week. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Those All right, do you think production gave that lady this t-shirt, or she just happened to be wearing it when she walked in? I like to think the latter. But actually, this tell-all in the first 20 minutes is more dramatic than the entire season. Everyone there, there wants there, the rose. So like, went home night one. So, like... like <laughs> oh, let me go. I did. did. You did. Well, I did. Absolutely, <laughs> Catherine. I did go home night one. So and and Zach yeah, so got I to got learn your personality and then sent you home. So what does that say about you? So, of course, from here, Jesse starts going over the main drama points of the season. Christina Mandrell, who Kat says sucked up the energy of the room whenever she was there, then Anastasia, who thought Kylie was literally going to fight her, and of course the claim that she was there just to gain followers. We both have mutual friends, and I was told that you explicitly said that you were only going on this show as a business opportunity. Yes. I literally oh, I have the receipts. No, I have the I've screenshots seen the receipts. to prove it. I've seen the receipts. My favorite part of this segment is everyone yelling they have the receipts, but no one showing the receipts. That is, until Kat blurts out... Anastasia, well, you had a boyfriend the on the show. What? 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 You so called him in the Bahamas when you got your phone back. Yes! yes. I, have I, have I have a boyfriend. Have a boyfriend. The guy with the dog! So Jesse Palmer goes, whoa, whoa, whoa there, buckaroos. Let's slow this one down. Anastasia, want to respond to that? Yeah, no. I didn't have a boyfriend to clear that up. Well, who was watching your dog? Who was My that mom. guy? I have receipts. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I have receipts. Oh, yeah? Well, show me the receipt. That this is a fast food receipt from April. Also, I cackled when she said... Well, who was watching your dog? As if only a boyfriend could do that. Gotcha! Okay, keep, okay, keep lying, Anastasia. Maybe you'll hit the 50k you wanted so bad. Oh, wow. <laughs> we then turn to the other Anastasia drama from the season, her saying Kylie was going to literally fight her and calling her aggressive. Mercedes, Kylie, Charity over there, my girl Allie over there, black women in general, Every day we deal with the stereotype of being aggressive people and we deal with these very harsh microaggressions. Now Anastasia apologizes for this and Kylie says that while they did talk about it earlier, it felt as though it wasn't so much an earnest outreach of concern. It was more so, okay, oh God, people are gonna think these things of me. What is it gonna do for my life? What is it gonna do for my mm -hmm, career? Mm -hmm. It was still Stoss playing the victim. But she does now accept her apology and hopes Anastasia can learn and grow from their experience. From here, we then move to Kat and all that drama from when she kissed Zach before Charity's one-on-one, -on -one, with both her and Charity stating that they're good and talked it out. I think what was not mature and wasn't handled appropriately was just how you spoke to me, how you spoke about my character. And I will say it again. If I'm sure you will. Place that bitch right on up. Mm. I ah, I see Brooklyn came prepared with all her canned one-liners from the season ready to go. Wonder if she'll be meeting up with Sex Shirt Lady after the show to try and sell her some If the Shoe Fits merch. And, and but like okay, I said, yeah. that's why I said If the Shoe Fits, lace that bitch up. So yeah, there's no love lost between Kat and Brooklyn, as Brooklyn still calls Kat classless, and Kat says Brooklyn took her attacks too far. But with that done, it's now time for the first hot seat segment with Jess. Here, Jessie goes over her one-on-one -on -one discussion with Zach that led to their breakup, where Jess says the two were just poorly communicating with each other, but she's proud of how she left the show. I have never seen myself be so, um, strong when it comes to, like, a breakup before, and so I, I was smiling because I was proud of myself. Okay, Jess is for sure getting a spot in paradise, right? I mean, Jessie just goes on and on about her saying stuff like, I just love the fact that you're talking about learning to love yourself and understanding and knowing that you are worthy of love because Jess, you absolutely are. And you light up every room that you're in. And apparently I've heard that behind the scenes, the whole cast really loves Jess. She could be a paradise lock, and with this too? <laughs> you had social media blowing up about the body <laughs> glitter. You know what? I may not have shown that much confidence, but that glitter gave me a little bit more, and hmm. I think anyone that wants to buy glitter should. Oh, she's getting that body glitter sponsorship for sure. You know, never let anyone dull your sparkle, and I live by that. You have a sparkle. They said, Terry, you have a sparkle. 
Do not let those girls take your sparkle away. Next up in the hot seat is Tea Girl Greer. And this is the most shocking part of the whole tell-all, as Jessie brings up news that Greer made social media comments in the past defending someone who wore blackface. And Greer, the truth is, as a franchise, we've done a very poor job in the past of addressing serious topics head on. And we're not gonna miss that opportunity here tonight. Okay, my jaw was on the floor. I never thought I'd see the day the show admitted stuff like this. Because yeah, this is exactly what the tell-all is for, coming up here and addressing these controversies, giving people like Greer an opportunity to address it and not have it be swept under the rug for us to assume the show doesn't care. Here's what Greer had to say. It's not about the intent, it's about the impact. This acquaintance of mine that I knew, performing blackface, was racist. Me defending it was racist. My ignorance was racist. I'm just deeply sorry that I hurt the black community. Wait, they even have a diversity consultant? What show am I watching? Never thought I'd see it. Now the final two hot seat segments are for Kat, who describes how she's still unsure about what went wrong with Zach, but has an update on her relationship with her mother. I have a relationship, like a mother-daughter relationship with my mom now. Like my whole family has just came together through this and most importantly like my mom and I can really start building like a healthy relationship. And then it's Charity's turn. Here Jessie goes over her breakup and her relationship with Zach. What do you think it was about Zach? Um, Then, Jessie brings up what lessons Charity has learned from this experience, and she says that now she knows she's worthy to find love again. I feel like now I'm even more, like, eager and more ready um, to truly, like, find my person. So, I think, yeah. Well, we don't know what's to come, but... <laughs> uh-huh. Could be anything, right? So at this point, Jessie throws out some behind-the-scenes clips, like Mercedes twerking lessons... Have you ever farted doing it? Oh my Never. God. Or Allie and Anastasia having a sexually charged kissing lesson. I do want to kiss Zach, but like I want someone to like show me the ropes. Don't look like that. Okay. I got a kiss. Yeah, they all. Nah, instead she kisses that annoying orange from YouTube instead. Then finally they bring Zach out to talk to the ladies where they all basically say they respect and appreciate him and his decisions. I just want to say I respect you, and I care about you, and I hope you're happy and well. We think we should do a little proper goodbye and do a little group hug action. We're doing a group hug. Now they do have him address what went wrong with Jess, Kat, and Charity, where Zach sort of says with them he was unsure of his decisions until the last minute, AKA, I don't know, it be what it be. But to finish off this tell-all, we get three things. First is a set of bloopers that has a moment that actually made me laugh out loud for the first time in this franchise's blooper history. Mold wine, which sounds really gross. Right, it's mold, like M-U-L-L-E-D. Like, like you it's know mold. not mold wine. Then we get a Fantasy Suites preview, which I'll be going over tomorrow. And finally, a Bachelorette announcement. Hey! Hi. Third in the how we doing? We're good! Oh. Yes, Charity is going to be our next Bachelorette. At first, Jessie hides it as a game for their social media, asking her rapid-fire questions. Bachelor in Paradise or The Bachelorette? Ah, oh, goodness gracious. Let's say Bachelorette. Are you good with that? Yeah. Could you imagine if she said paradise? Jesse would have had to try again and knock on another person's door. And I, for one, am not ready for a season with Christina Mandrell. Charity. No. I want you to be our next Stop. bachelorette. Is this for real? No yeah. way. So that's it for this recap of week 8 of The Bachelor, Hometowns, and The Women Tell All. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe for more, and let me know your thoughts on the week in the comments section below. And until next time, Bachelor Fan Take out. So why should she choose you? Um, um is the sound in dumb. Okay, should we just start over? No, no, we need to put a pin in this.